Let the church say amen. amen. I want to thank these young adults, these millennials, for blessing us this morning. Your voices are just beautiful and bring in this season of, of Christmas. Thank our musicians for all that they do to make it happen. And we are certainly grateful to the ushers who bless us with their presence and let us know that it's good to be here. They did to ask you that. Are you feeling good about being here? Also, we thank God for the ministers and for our diagonate and our elders for all that they do to bless us as we come to the house of the Lord one more time. I want to stay in this series. If you've been following with me, we've been looking at the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. And uh, I'm trying to help us to connect with the angels. And I believe the angels had a message, and the angels were leading us to know that there was something special about this time of the year. And so we want to go back here to the second chapter of Luke's Gospel, the Gospel of Luke. In verses 8 through 20, one more time. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. I'd like to lift as a topic to go with this text and for your thinking, a subject to go with this scripture and for the sermon, directions to a divine destination. Let us join together in prayer. Lord, we ask that you will bless your word and hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Bless your word, dear Lord, that it will become for us a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. Bless your word, dear God. Send it forth, and please do not allow it to return unto you void, but do that which you have called it to do. Bless your word, Lord, that we will not just be hearers of it, but doers of it. Bless your word, Lord, that we'll come to understand it as the words of eternal life. For the grass will wither and the flower will fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. Bless your word, Lord, that your word will become our words and our words will become your word. So let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord. Thy people heareth. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all and God's people said together, Amen. 
I get a little concerned about Christmas, and that is that it seems like it's only a day or maybe a month, and maybe just a few times around the 25th of December. And then after that, all of a sudden, we find ourselves pulling down the Christmas tree, taking the ornaments off, and then taking the bulbs down, and we pack them up, and we place them in storage up in the attic, and we've got to deal with all of this tinsel and all of these fallen pine leaves that have hit the floor, and then you've got to clean it up, and then you've got to deal with all of the things that you have received, and all of a sudden you've got to deal with where you're going to put them, and then you have, am I talking to anybody yet? <laughs> then, then, you, then you have to deal with putting the house back in order, and uh, then all of the people who have come have now gone, and you deal with the fact that, that what, what was just a great time does not seem to have anything lasting. Ah, and I'm trying to, trying to figure out how can I make it lasting, and, and the Lord is showing me here in this particular marvelous, wonderful book of his that it was meant not to be just a day, and maybe a couple of days off, and just about a week or so, and then before we know it, we are into the same grind again. I, I, I believe that God is saying something to us through this wonderful scene of these shepherds going down to a place called Bethlehem to behold a baby. When you get a chance, really pray about it and begin to focus your thoughts on the 11th verse. And it says this, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And in it, I believe, is what the Lord wants us to, to know and the Lord wants us to live. Because, because we, we, we have a problem that is like cheap. Ah. If you don't believe me, I believe Isaiah pinpointed even better than I can. Because when Isaiah wrote in his marvelous book of the ancient day, in the 53rd chapter in the 6th verse, he said, We are like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has led on him the iniquity of us all. Oh, say that again, Pastor. All we like sheep have gone astray. I, I, I'm puzzled by the fact that the sheep that was there on that hillside didn't go anywhere. When the truth of the matter is, sheep have been known to just stray. They wander. Uh, sheep have a way of, of just leaving. You know that 15th chapter of Luke's gospel. Uh, was it not a, a shepherd who had to leave the 99 to go after that one little rascal? Sheep have a way of just getting away from the rest of everybody, wandering. And, and, and they do. And when they do, they fall into the prey of those who will hurt them. They fall in between rocks. They, uh, they become trapped in the bushes and the thistles of life. We, we have a tendency to wander. And, and, and when we wander, we wind up getting in trouble. And usually the mind wanders first. Ah, and the body going to catch up with the mind. Ah, I'm, I'm getting on somebody's pew. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, we've got to deal with the wandering. Uh, and so the Lord has is, is just revealed to us that, that the shepherds didn't wander. They were going somewhere. And the angel had declared to them, For unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He's born in the city of David. He, he's given them some place that they got to go. Uh, not to wander, but to know that they can beat a pathway to this place. But even more so, uh, he, he's let them know, you're special. 
Uh, for we've been saying, and we've heard it said so many times before, that, that the shepherds weren't special. The shepherds were the reject of the society. The, the shepherds happened to be those who were disliked. And, and naturally so, I, I understand why. I, 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 I don't know about you, but I'm, I, I love the, the old westerns, cowboy movies, and, uh, Lash LaRue, and, and uh, uh, Roy Rogers. Uh, have I gotten to your person? Uh, uh, that's the old cowboys. Uh, they, they didn't kill anybody. They, when they would shoot somebody, they would always knock the gun out the hands. <laughs> Tie them up. Lone Ranger. I'm trying to get to somebody. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one in this old age club. <laughs> but, 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 but. <laughs> somebody say very small. <laughs> but, but, but he, here, here's what the problem the cattlemen didn't like the sheep herders because the sheep would eat up all the grass, didn't leave anything. And, and so that's why sheep have been known to wander because they're always trying to find new pastures. And the sheep herder, the shepherd had to carry them continuously to new places. Wandering was a part of their nature. And the truth of the matter is, wandering is a part of our nature. We can't be satisfied with anything. We, 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 we get to the point where, where everything can be just as good as it possibly can, and yet something always looks better on the other side of the fence. I like it well. I think it was Mitzi Stallings uh, Glass once said, you know, the only thing about some grass on the other side of the fence is a water bill that your neighbor had to pay. It, it, it's, it's just wandering. But, but here the angel said to them, Behold, fear not. I bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all people for unto you, unto you, 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 you're special. You, you're so special that, that God has made you the first to hear that he's coming. You're special. You'll be the first to see him. You're special. You've got the news before anybody else. You're special. You're better than even the potentates and the kings and the wise men and the astrologers and the scientists. You received it before they even heard about it. You, you've gotten it before they even saw a star. You're the one who the Lord has come to, to tell even two years before they knew anything about it. You are special. Has the Lord ever let you know every now and again when you don't think that you're worth anything and amount to anything that you're special? When you stop and think about it, you got up this morning, you didn't have to, you could not have, but yet the Lord is telling you, come on now, somebody ought to be grateful that you're special. And when you've been through something, you didn't know how you were able to get through it, but yet the Lord brought you through. You are special. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Where are you going? Let, let, let me suggest a few things if you don't mind. First, first, first of all, uh, I, I, I believe we've, we've got to understand this this matter, that, that we are, are special. We, we've got to understand directions. No, uh, the angels, the angels didn't, didn't tell them uh, what street to go down, uh, 
to make a left turn, to go two blocks up, and then turn to the right. No, the, the directions was just the city of David. Matter of fact, I get a little heartburn. When you ask somebody for some directions, And they, Ara and Dara, and then try to tell you something <laughs> and lead you just as wrong as you can possibly. Some of us are spiritually getting some directions from some others. And, and just, just let us almost to disaster. It's important. Directions are important. I'm so glad about GPS. And, and yet, yet I can see something divine in it. Because you got to look up to the satellite and get your directions. But don't trust that too much either. I can tell you the neighborhood I was in. I was in Poplar Hall and I went down the street and I made the left turn because that's what it said. But the thing about it is that it hadn't been updated because the highway had cut. The street that I was supposed to go through was blocked by the highway. But directions are important. And nobody can give you directions like God. He won't lead you wrong. Directions. I, 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 I know that sometimes we don't think that it's, it's the right thing because we think we know everything. Somebody told you when you run out of examples, you can always use your family. Oh, we love Christmas. In my house and in my, my family, we love Christmas. And, and when we all would get together, it was just good. I, I remember being the new dad on the block or the, the, new, the new one of the family. And uh, we were supposed to put together the swing that these nephews of ours are supposed to use. And, and, and we had it in the garage. And we took out all of the parts and, and had the tools and, and uh, didn't, didn't, didn't bother about the, about the, the, the paper, the, the instructions, and put it off to the side. And, uh, and I said, don't you think you ought to read the, the instructions? No, Bob, we know what we're doing. You, you don't know, you haven't been down this road before. You don't have a clue about this, but, but we, we know what we're doing. We've been doing it for a long time. Put the thing up, and I began to read the directions, and there was one place where it said, don't put it up in the house. <laughs> and they learned from that time, they'd better learn how to read directions. Because we had to disassemble it in order to be able to take it outside. Directions. Isn't it a marvelous thing that God gives us some directions? In our sinfulness, he gives us that which can get us out of our situations. Does he not lead us and guide us? I'm glad about a God who gives us the word for direction. And then, then, then I, 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 I'm blessed by the fact that he had these angels to tell us, for unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Divine encounter. A Savior. You can't save yourself. I'm the Savior. You can't do anything without me. I'm Lord of your life. Two words. Savior. Then Christ the Lord. You see, Savior is the one who delivers you. Sets you free. Helps you with your mind being able to think clearly. Takes you out of the the mundane issues of life. I believe Rick Warren has a wonderful story. He has a series on purpose. 
the purpose-driven church, the purpose-driven life. But he's also had a wonderful little book on the purpose of Christmas. And he explains the idea of salvation that, that is not only of sin, but it's just the fact that God frees you, releases you. And, and he talks about his little daughter of three years old, and the little girl was sitting in the back seat strapped down. And she was just restless and restless. She sticks her head out of the window and says, Lord, will you set me free? Sometimes that's all we've got to be able to do is call on the Savior. Set me free. Free me up from the things that cause my mind to wander. Free me up from the things that hold me down. Free me up from the things that keep me from being all that I need to be. Set me free. But there is on the back end of that same verse, it says, Christ the Lord. It's the only place in the scriptures, the only place rather in the New Testament, where it says Christ the Lord. And what's significant about it is that he's not only the Savior, but when he really has your life, he's the Lord. He's the one who your obedience is to. He's the one who's in charge of your life. He's the one who dictates what you need to do. He's the one that takes you where he wants you to go. He's the one that blesses your heart and soul. He's the one that gives you what you need. He's the one that makes life possible. I'm glad to know not only the Savior. Some of us can only say, I'm saved. But, but yet when you got to the point where you know you're also under his lordship, he rules and reigns over your life. Have I got anybody that can say, I know what you're talking about? I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't do what I do. But Lord knows I can't help myself because he is my Lord and my Savior. Well, I want you to understand that God has given us divine encounter. And so here are these brothers who have gone through the things that have been causing them to move astray. And he takes them now to a destination. No special directions, just the destination. You'll find him in the city of David. And he doesn't even mention the name Bethlehem. Just the city of David. It was appointed that they should be there. They had to register. They had to report in. The city of David. But when you look at this destination, sometimes destinations have become the place where you end up. But I want to suggest to you that no destination is when you know you're heading home. You're heading to a special place. When you used to ride the train, the conductor would come and said, destination, Norfolk. Destination is where you're heading and You'll, you'll wind up there. The destination of Bethlehem is more than what we really sing about, oh, little town. No, it's not, it's not a little town. This is a major city. This destination, home, no place like home. Even when you live in a small house, but it's home. It's a mansion to you. It's a castle if you don't mind. Home means something when you've been away from it a while. Home! There's no place like home. Come on, talk to me. When you look at it and you think about it, you ought to be glad you got a destination called home. Ruth knew what home was. When her husband died, Ruth knew what home was. When it was just her and Naomi. Ruth knew that home was going to be a new opportunity, a new life. There's something about home. Any, anybody ever been away from home? Glad to be able to get back home. Home is different. David knew what home was. As a soldier, he got to the point where he needed to have just a little taste of home. And some soldiers heard it and went back there even to the point of losing their lives. Because home meant so much to David. Home is everything to me. I love home. Home is what the Lord was being placed in. A place that called home, Bethlehem, was the home. The home, what kind of home was it? It's the house of bread. Can you put it together, Pastor? Yes. Water for, for David, but bread for Jesus. 
Every time I stop and think about it, I'm glad to know there's a place that I can go and be fed. A place where I can call home, home is a blessing. Isn't it a blessing to you to be able to know that one day that no matter where you are, you're going to be able to get back home. Because this journey of life is going to be one in which there's going to come to an end. But isn't it good to know you got a home? Home where in glory. Home where the saints are. Home where the Lord awaits you. Home where the God that I love and I love adore. Home is where we're going to rejoice because I don't have to wonder anymore. I know where I'm going. I'm going home to be with the Lord. Isn't that good news? And when a Christian knows that, he doesn't worry about a thing. He doesn't even fret about nothing. He knows he's got a home. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's good to know that I got a home. A home. More than a destination. But a place we can call home. And it's good to always be at home with the Lord. Won't you stand to your feet as we come? The angels are still telling us. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Millions of people have gone to where the grotto a grotto a hewn out cavern, a cave if you will. Almost like a hole in the side of a hill. Here's what God does. Turn that lowly place into a shrine. What God can do with a home is he can turn even the struggles and the, the mishaps and the problems and the, the pain. Bring peace. Bring love. Bring hope. When you accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior, Watch how life begins to change. Watch how your straying, your wandering changes. You can get settled. Your mind can rest at ease. You can have peace like you've never had it before. In the comforts of God, be in his hand. Must have meant something because when David wrote the 23rd Psalm, that, that ancient shepherd king comes down to the very end and says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Listen to it now. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's a good thing to have a place you can call home, that you can claim. That in all of your wanderings and all of your going astray, you can always come back home. And so he extend an invitation to somebody They might give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ and know that there is no place like home. Be blessed to be in the house of the Lord and to know the Christ, the Savior of the world. If you've been one who's accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, but you're not serving him like you should, we enjoy you to come and be a part of those who love the Lord and love serving Him. 
He's Lord of our lives. This is a moment. This is a time. God invites you. He came to earth for us. That we might have life and have it more abundantly. This is your time right now. Rededication. To say to the Lord, I know you're my Savior. But I want you to be my Lord. To be the one who rules and reigns in my life. As we come to the floor, this is your time to move into the aisles and walk to this place in this altar area up front. That the Lord God will have your life and have it. That he might give you life more abundantly. This is your time. Lead me, guide me along the way. When God leads you and God guides you, He'll lead you into marvelous and wonderful places where the psalmist, David, that king shepherd, said, I shall not want. I live with contentment that all is well. Leads me into the green pastures where there's never a concern about being empty and not filled. Sheep are strange. And we are like sheep. And he said,